This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Not a power outage, Marty. No. <laughs> the school at night, Sachi's gone miss missing. The instant I push open the front door, Makana and Michiru run up expectantly. <gasps> it's this song! I've been waiting for this one to show up. This is one of my favorites. No. I tried everywhere you suggested she might go, and all the public gathering spots I could think of. But no sign of her. That's my theory. My theory is she got kidnapped. She let me know that none of the police stations in the prefecture are looking for after a girl. Nothing since then. Oh. Understandably enough, the two grow downcast as I speak. Sakaki and Amine have hung back instead of rushing up to interrogate me, but it seems the news has a similar effect on them. They hear small frustrated sighs from their direction. Where Sachi actually went is she wanted to joyride the bimbo mobile. <laughs> but it's so fun, she just didn't want to stop. <laughs> I somehow don't think that's the case, but. <laughs> Even before the words are out of her mouth, Makana's yanking at my sleeve with impatient little jerks. Pulling out the British git. <laughs> no, there's nothing to apologize for. That's the natural reaction. Doesn't matter how much time I spend outside, there's no getting around the fact that I didn't find Sachi. Appreciate it. Catching the towel Amine tosses in my direction, I wipe cold rainwater from my hair and shoulders. Don't really feel like it right now. <laughs> Hypothermia? That only happens in the movies! Oh wait, no. <laughs> Alright. Her argument's logical, and she delivered it with such a painfully stoic expression that I can't bring myself to be stubborn. Gazing out the front windows into the gray sky, Amine mutters to no one in particular. The rain started falling a little before dawn and hasn't let up since. If anything, the sound of water drumming against the building seems to grow louder with the passage of time. How fitting that the time something serious is happening, it's starting to rain. That is a so she had her wallet with her. <sighs> Somebody breaks into the silence, venting some new concern that's pushed its way into their mind. Someone else offers their attempt at soothing words, and we're left listening to the rain once more. Since my return, we've repeated this pattern more times than I can count. A little after nine, Chizuru calls to let me know she'd given a formal notice to the police. It's been nearly four hours since then. Since we've decided to rely on the authorities, the most helpful thing you can do is stay calm and keep out of the way. The police are fundamentally superior in terms of manpower and investigative skills, on top of which they have the critical advantage of socially sanctioned authority. In other words, we can let the professionals take care of the rest. A completely understandable judgment for a principal to make. Objectively, it's probably the wisest possible course of action. But however rational it may be, sitting around quietly like this is proving very hard to stomach. I spent longer than this standing by on the job, but it feels completely different this time. The anxiety and frustration swirling around inside me seem to be growing exponentially with each hour that ticks by. It's increasingly a struggle to maintain my cool. <laughs> Sachi definitely said those exact words to me just a few feet from where I'm sitting. And when Sakaki and Amane went into her room to investigate, they didn't find any evidence that she wandered off on some spur-of-the-moment journey. 
<laughs> they need some video games. I know of a good one called Fruit of Grisea. Oh, they're like, wait, that's it. It basically just turns to the, to the Muppets where they get the script for the movie. They're like, oh, that's where Sachi went. <laughs> the girl does have a slightly whimsical side, but it's hard to imagine her taking a trip without even packing a change of clothes. Wait a second. Scrolling back, I'll be waiting in the- oh, the usual place. I thought it was the usual spot, like from Kingdom Hearts 2. Nope, different place. Suddenly leaping up from the sofa, Michiru breaks the silence, her voice tinged with something close to desperation. Wow. <laughs> That's not part of the play. <laughs> Don't worry, we got Culver's around here. She's fine. Really, Makina? They just opened one. <laughs> yeah, her wallet wasn't in her room, apparently. She's got money to eat, at least. You can't eat money. How's it going, Nick? <laughs> I feel like Sachi might have a gun on her. Or at least a knife. It's true. Michiru falls back into an awkward silence. Nobody's come out and said it until now, but we've all been thinking something of the sort. We all know Sakaki's right. Considering Sachi's personality, it's hard to imagine she'd vanish without a word. And the completely normal condition of her room makes this even stranger. Maybe maybe she just got fed up with everything. Maybe she's like, you know what? I, I slave away for everybody. I'm out. <laughs> no matter how much I want to deny it, there's a very real possibility something has happened to her. But it's probably kidnapping. Unable to fully deny the unpleasant possibility, Michiru's voice grows weak and uncertain. She's She got kidnapped by Nasty Jack, for sure. Michiru's right. Her stress might be accumulating. Yeah! She, maybe she just maybe she just snapped. I feel like Sachi would be the most terrifying character in the game if she actually snapped. As long as we don't hear anything from the police or Sachi herself, we can't make any assumptions. And until then, we need to do what we can. I feel like the kid, if she got kidnapped, though, wouldn't the kidnappers have, like, called somebody about it now, because you don't, you, well, wait, I was about to say you don't kidnap people without, like, demanding a ransom, but, oh, no, you can, just it, for very, very dark veins. Apparently, the others are just as fed up with waiting around as I am. The instant the words leave my mouth, they lean in toward me with intent expressions on their faces. <laughs> <laughs> Sheriff Piglet, thank goodness he's here. And don't worry, Sheriff Piglet's not alone. He also has Deputy Wario with him. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> Sounds about right. Yesterday morning, Sachi and I agreed to continue the testing at 1 p.m., as usual. But I got called to my part-time job at the last minute. I told Sachi we'd reschedule for 5 in the afternoon. Said she might be a little late. Asked if that would be alright. <laughs> Generally, if you get kidnapped, the kidnappers are not going to buy you dinner first. Even if it is even if it is the 4 for 4 meal at Wendy's. I thought you meant 5 p.m. next week. <laughs> After that, she just confirmed that she'd be waiting in the usual place as of 5 p.m. <laughs> Inevitably, every stream, the conversation turns to fast food. That's just where my mind is at. Sakaki abruptly interrupts Amine's words, her eyes flashing. Ooh, good question, Yumiko. <gasps> Dang, Yumiko's got quite the head on her shoulders. I see. That just might be it. 
With that one sentence, everyone, with the exception of a certain bottle blonde, instantly grasped what Sakaki is implying. Yeah, it's definitely coherent, but... After accepting Sakaki's request with a mildly exasperated nod, Amane sits up straight in her chair to explain. Is she still waiting somewhere else that's just not the classroom? And she's just like waiting there for 24 hours like, this is fine? <laughs> Sachi, we really gotta work on that. She's hanging out in Twilight Town in the usual spot. At this point, Amine finally succeeds in shoving Michiru's train of thought back down the tracks to the point everyone else passed five minutes ago, prompting an overblown reaction. I didn't explicitly tell her to wait in the classroom. There's a possibility she went somewhere else entirely. <laughs> sea salt ice cream bars! <laughs> She's hanging out on the clock tower. Normally, anyone would know I was referring to the classroom, but in Sachi's case, a misunderstanding of some kind seems disturbingly plausible. Anyone got a gummy ship? We're gonna need one. To be honest, I don't know what she could have thought I meant other than the classroom. No. Nothing else about the location, anyway. <laughs> How is sea salt ice cream even sweet? I mean, it's so has sugar in it, it just also has salt. So it's sweet and salty. It's like chocolate-covered pretzels. I've been trying. Outside the school grounds, the only place that really comes to mind is the shopping district. Yeah. For one thing, I thoroughly combed both the shopping district proper and the commercial area around the station. Okay, it's... even if Sachi is like super obedient and has some some stuff going on, how long will she wait there until she finally gives up and thinks she's been stood up? Or she, would she literally just wait there until she dies? I don't actually want to know the answer, but like, seriously? Chocolate covered pretzels are amazing, Marty. If you don't like them, that's fine, more for me. They're delicious. One thing that I'm curious to try, but also, like, may maybe that wouldn't be good, is chocolate-covered bacon. That's a thing, and, like, I'm like, I love chocolate, I love bacon. Could be amazing, could be kind of terrible. I don't really know. <laughs> As if on cue, all four turn their gazes towards me. Oh, hi, hi. Yeah, you're not wrong. I might be overlooking something here. I'm going to try to settle down and think this over as calmly as possible. <laughs> Everyone assents to Amine's suggestion. We temporarily suspend our meeting in an attempt to break out of this rut. The girls trudge back to their respective rooms. Soon enough, I'm left alone on the lobby sofa, gazing blankly out the window. In the end, I throw myself right back on into the problem without even taking the time to stand up and stretch my legs. The usual place, is it? The usual modifier means it has to be somewhere she visits frequently. 
in context, someplace that I've been with her on a regular basis. No matter how many times I roll those conditions through my head, the only ones that fit the bill, or the only places that fit the bill are inside the grounds of this school. It's enough to make me realize just how limited our relationship is. Sachi and I have really never been more than classmates. Our frequent interactions the result of simple proximity inside this somewhat claustrophobic school. Not that any of that is an excuse. So I can't even track down a single classmate without my special eyes and ears. Thank God my master's not alive to see this. She'd be in hysterics. No. If my master was here, she'd probably get angry at me before anything else. Angry that I'm wasting my time thinking about this crap instead of the problem at hand. <laughs> All right, we're pulling out, we're pulling out the Phoenix right <laughs> the line of logic, like literally. That's right. Think. If the general premise I'm working from is correct, there has to be something I'm missing here. This isn't the first time I've hit a wall like this, and Asako taught me to do the what <laughs> taught me what to do at times like these. The concept of coincidence was invented by vapid romanticists as a pickup line. Listen up and listen good. Things happen the way they do for a reason. When none of it makes any sense, stop bashing your head against the wall and take a step back. Let your mind go limp. Just like the proverbial bluebird of happiness, the answer is going to be sitting in a surprisingly obvious place. Surprisingly obvious, huh? She's just in her room. Come to think of it, it seems like plenty of things have happened even inside this birdcage of a school. <laughs> now we're getting the collage of all the different times we've been with Sachi. To be perfectly honest, at first I just had her down as a weirdly diligent girl. But after a while, I found out she has a, pri a surprisingly amusing side. And eventually I started getting genuinely interested in what makes her tick. Sachi kind of resembles me. That thought might have been the biggest single reason for my uncharacteristic curiosity. But whatever the case, my little talks with her have been leaving a strong impression on me lately. Even so, there's just nothing there. Nothing in those memories that stands out as an answer. Damn it! Tearing my eyes away from the dour gray sky, I glance around the lobby in an attempt to distract myself from this unproductive frustration. A bamboo broom propped up beside the entrance catches my eyes. <sighs> Seeing the broom sitting idly by is proof enough that Sachi's not around. It never seems to leave her side when she's puttering around in the dorm. No, we're not saying goodbye to Sachi yet. No way! <laughs> Just yesterday, she made her work as a pseudo-maid sound like her life's mission. Come to think of it, outside of the classroom, Sachi's been wearing a maid uniform constantly since the day we met. <laughs> Hold on! Could I be making a really fundamental mistake in my assumptions here? For one thing, if I was wrong about something that basic, the field of possibilities grows significantly wider. And when I narrow those down using the conditions I've been rolling around in my head all this time, all of a sudden I've got a completely different candidate for the usual place. But if I'm right about this, there's one point in particular that seems completely inexplicable. That said, we've reached a total dead end otherwise. I have no choice but to run with it. What are you thinking, bro? Just as I'm rising to my feet, Michiru reappears in the lobby, probably stopping by to check on me. Yeah, I think I may know where Sachi is. <laughs> like I said, I might have figured out the usual place Sachi was talking about. I'm going to head there to check right away. Let the others know, will you? Alright, I'm counting on you, Michiru. Yes, ma'am. Without pausing to grab an umbrella or a raincoat, I rush out of the dorm, set off by Michiru's earnest, if completely out of character, words of concern. <laughs> Not bothering to avoid the puddles in the pocketed asphalt road, I sprint single-mindedly away from the dorm. We going back to the beach? On the job, it's, fun it's a fundamental common sense to not to set up an umbrella, even in the middle of a typhoon. This rain doesn't even phase me. More importantly, every second counts right now. An entire day has passed since Sachi went missing, 24 hours since she left the dorm. And she may have been waiting for me all this time. She may still be waiting even now. Too festering s the festering sense of frustration inside me swells to unbearable intensity. <sighs> Sachi! Sachi's 
Oh, come on, the lewd CG again? Oh, was she the girl from our past? Ironic. After all that time going around in circles, now it's like the dam broke. Just as my master said, the breakthrough was staring me in the face all alone. Sachi gave me plenty of hints herself. My new hypothesis growing firmer with every step, I make my way towards the other usual place. Nothing left to do but see if she's there. We go into the park.